Today is uh, Tuesday, August the 23rd, 2022. Uh, most of you are well aware that we have just about finished with uh, summer and school started across America and colleges and universities and high schools and elementary, or it's about ready to start. And so I'm, I'm taking time for us to just kind of do evaluation and I'm reading out of Isaiah 28. I'm going to walk through this chapter over the course of the next days coming up. Uh, call for us to just, you know, get, get ourselves ready. We're facing something that uh, we probably have never faced before. And I think God's chasing his church and the process is going to do some renewing among us. So I'm I'm going to read the first eight verses of Isaiah 28. It says, Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which is at the head of the verdant valleys, to those who are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, like a tempest of hail, and a destroying storm like a flood of mighty waters overflowing who will bring them down to the earth with his hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim will be trampled underfoot and the glorious beauty is a fading flower which is at the head of the verdant valley like the first fruit before the summer which an overseer or observer sees. He eats it up while it is still in his hand. In that day, the Lord of hosts will be for a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people. For a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, judgment and for strength to those who turn back at the battle at the gate. But they also erred through wine and through intoxicating drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through intoxicating drink. They are swallowed up by wine. They are out of the way through intoxicating drink. They err in vision, they stumble in judgment, for all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that no place is clean. Wow, pretty straightforward word. Ephraim is Israel. The city of Samaria is its capital. The spirit of pride has filled the land. Isaiah's giving prophetic word about it. The valleys are filled with great fruit. The prosperity of the land has led them to celebrate with great festivals. And those festivals, if you study the history of Israel this time, has led them to indulge the lust of their flesh while celebrating their prosperity. In verse 3, it appears the crown of their pride, instead of praise to God for the prosperity, has become drunkenness. In verse 7, tells us that even the priest and the prophet have erred through intoxicating drink. So I want you to hear what Matthew Henry has to say. Matthew Henry uh, uh, wrote a, a thorough, complete commentary of the word of God from Genesis through Revelation. And I quote, Ephraim was notorious for drunkenness and excess of riot. Samaria, the head of the fat valleys, <laughs> was full of those that were overcome with wine, were broken with it. You see how foolishly drunkards act and no marvel when in the commission of the, the sin they make fools and brutes of themselves. They yield, number one, to be conquered by the sin. It overcame them and brings them into bondage in Second Peter 2.19. They are led captive by it and the captivity is more shameful and inglorious because it's voluntary. And two, they are ruined by it. They are broken by wine. Their constitution is broken by it. And their health ruined. They are broken in their callings and estates and their families are brought to ruin by it. Their peace with God is broken and their souls are in danger of being undone. And all this for the gratification of a base lust. Woe to these drunkards of Ephraim. Their drinking to excess is itself a practical error. They think to raise their fancy by it but they ruin their judgment and so put a cheat upon themselves. They think to preserve their health by it and help digestion, but they spoil their constitution and hasten diseases and deaths. It is also the occasion of great many errors in, errors in principle 
Their understanding is clouded. Their conscience debauched by it. They espouse corrupt notions and form their minds in favor of their lust. Probably some were drawn into worship idols by their love of the wine and strong drink, which there were, was plenty of at their idolatrous festivals. And so they erred through my, wine as Israel, for the love of the daughter of Moab, joined themselves to Baal Peor. End of quote. Hmm. Broken by drunkenness, the pride of Ephraim. In the middle 90s, I traveled to Russia to plant a church. I was overwhelmed by the drunken state of the people, the general populace in Russia. My personal observation from traveling the streets of Moscow, from riding a train to Petroslavsk and a bus to Olenets and watching the people on the streets and, and interacting with a large number of people at a, a convocation of the gospel. People were drunk everywhere. People were drinking on the streets everywhere. Everywhere alcohol was being consumed and much of it vodka. On the streets, in the train station, along the road, it was a massive scene that consumed the population while we were traveling for about 10 days in, in the former Soviet Union. The nation had had its day and in its prosperity, it seemed to have devolved into a stupor, at least by my observation, in that short 10 days we were there. Unfortunately, even though this prophecy is about Israel, one does not have to look far to see the state of drunkenness in America. From the capital of our nation, Washington, D.C., which is filled with pubs and bars and restaurants who make most of their living off of alcohol, to the local pubs, bars, and restaurants, America's decision-making has been clouded by a state of drunkenness. Even the priests and prophets of our day have yielded to the lust of their own flesh to fulfill the desires thereof. Second Peter 2.19 says, Well, they promised them liberty. They themselves are the slaves of corruption. In quotes, depravity. For by whom a person is overcome by him also is he brought into bondage. One of the major leaders of uh, not-for-profit Christian organization in America, flying on a plane with the president of uh, a denomination I was a part of, as that president related to me the story of this man getting on the plane and started drinking from the moment he got on, and by the time he got off, he was drunk. And I'm thinking, this is, this is America today. It's a picture of Isaiah 28. And notice the despicable result is that the tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that no place is clean. To this people, to this people, God promises a certain judgment. Is this sobering or not? It sure is sobering to me. It's sobering to me to think that here in the prosperity of America, we've proceeded so far that drunkenness becomes the norm of the day, even among the priests and prophets. Father, I, I pray for this country that I love, that I've been a part of for 73 years. And it breaks my heart as it must grieve the heart of God that a land that started seeking religious freedom, proclaiming a dependence upon God, has now become so humanistic and socialistic and communistic that we look like the Russia of the mid-90s. Have mercy on us, God. Have mercy on our nation. God, call your people to repentance. Holy Spirit, the living God, chasten us according to your will so that we might be 
the very people you have called us to be. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, I think this is pretty sobering for me today. I pray it's sobering for you, and I pray you'll listen to the Holy Spirit of God. And if in any place, maybe you've not been drunk with wine, but you've been drunk with the lust of your flesh, you would find the correction of the Spirit of God and, and turn from your wicked ways and humble yourself and pray, and, and maybe God will turn from his desire to chasten us harshly. Think on these things. Check it with the Word of God. and Come clean and follow God with all your heart. Have a blessed day.